Yeah, welcome back. Uh, well, we have Mr. Ayo DJ Bo now to talk about the happenings in the global oil space and as it affects the country, Nigeria. Good morning, Mr. Ayo. Good morning, and thanks for having me. You're welcome. Well, crude oil prices have been on the downward trend in the last few days on the back of low demand from China, of course, like we read, uh, due to COVID-19 and the restrictions. Now, should Nigeria be concerned? Does it look like this is this has come to stay? It thanks. Um, and just a bit of background. And if you look at the crude oil prices, as has declined by about 14 percent from the peak of uh, 70. That's actually speaking to the Brent crude now. Climbed from about $77 uh, on the 5th of July. That was the peak um, the last one year and um, currently around $66 even as at this morning also down. And if you look at how Nigeria is structured, uh, it's still very fresh in our mind the impact that food oil prices had on the economy last uh, within the last uh, year. And this also coming now, when you look at, though when you check our bench, uh, budget benchmark, it's at very considerable level, at um, our uh, $40, uh, $40 per barrel, that's a very considerable level. But you, you know that the revenue, the export, the proceeds that we get, 80% of our export uh, proceeds from crude oil, so once we have that sharp decline in terms of what comes into the economy, that impacts on a lot of things. Firstly, you see that impact on, on, uh, on, on what government is supposed to, in terms of capital expenditure, uh, you see that, in, or that impact on even the external reserves, in terms of appreciation of the external reserves. So uh, it's really very concerning, and as long as we don't uh, diversify our FX uh, inflow, then we'll continue to, uh, to get very concerned anytime we see crude oil prices uh, declining significantly. And when you look at, uh, based on the expected, when you look at the break-even points for, for Nigeria in terms of crude oil prices, it's been pegged around $130. And you, you can see uh, that major gap. Even looking at the, the supplementary budget that was just um, that was just passed, you will discover that the revenue expected out of expenditure of 900 billion, revenue expected is about 130 billion, which leaves a gap of about another 800 and something billion that will be funded by borrowing. So it really calls for concern and. It just always reminds us that, uh, that we need to intensify efforts in terms of diversify, that, excuse me, uh, diversifying our FX inflows. All right. So uh, based on the you know positive GDP growth forecast uh, for the rest of the quarters, uh, what kind of uh, setbacks should, do you think we should expect at this point? Okay. Thanks. Uh, we. The, pro uh, the projection, when you look at the traction that we, we've all been hoping for, we can see for Q1 it's been positive and we're expecting Q2 uh, before the end of this month, which we, when we look at it on a base uh, impact or a base effect, we expect that that should be, uh, that should be significant, at least above 4, 4 percent uh, based on the base effect. And uh, we expect that that traction will be able to sustain that traction, which has informed a lot of projection of above 2% growth rate for the rest of this year. But we've, we've been seeing even across the, the globe that the impact, the, uh, the impact of the Delta variant has been Im impacting on demand. Uh, you just spoke earlier in your intro about um, China just being... Uh, They've, they've reduced, they've locked down their, their ports. We have countries already on, on lockdown. And that would also have impact because when you look at in terms of remittances, that also helps to support the economy. Uh, if those economies are not also performing very, very well as they should, that would lead to job losses. What, while we are not expecting as much impact like last year due to the uh, the availability of vaccines now, 
Uh, but we feel that if, if, it's, um, this, if it's sustained uh, at the rate at which it's been increasing, number of um, the spread even in Nigeria has been increasing, that would impact on, on businesses. And um, you look at the, especially the education sector that has just been recovering. We know the, the tourism sector, uh, that is still very suffering. They've, been in, they've now been in recession and it's still suffering. Uh, because uh, large gatherings would be would be discouraged, so we would we don't expect when you look at some of the major sectors, uh, the agri sector, the industrial agri sector, as long as we don't see any major restriction in movement in lockdown, then we feel that yes, we will may still be able to meet up with that expectation uh, of of uh, projection in terms of growth at the end of the year. So do you think that Nigeria will be able to shield itself against this volatility of oil? And if you think so, how? So it's, uh, this has always been a recurring uh, question or concern each time we see oil dwindle. And we need to be deliberate. There's been a lot of um, white paper, a lot of documents working towards diversifying our, our FX uh, base. The economy is well diversified. And when you check for most new governments, anytime they, they are also talking about um, what they will do for the economy, it's always um, built more on diversifying our FX base. So I, I believe that what we can do, which is not new and which I feel government knows, it's, is that we need to identify what we can export. Look at the top crops that we can export or what we are currently exporting. When you look at the uh, import and export data, um, some of those top uh, cash crops that we export, then we can see how do we want to invest more? How do we want to add value to a lot of these things so that we get more revenue from, from them? And um, even minerals, um, gold, we have a lot of this and not to uh, just continue to, to dwell on them. It's we have a working paper that we can just implement. We need to start. Uh, even looking at it from the CBN angle, the support of um, some of the within the agri sector, we can see the intervention funds. Support to should to increase towards crops that we can export so that we can be able to earn. I know what the CBN is doing is, uh, uh, what the CBN is doing is to uh, focus on crops that, uh, that have been demanding a lot of effort, which is also very good because it would help us in terms of stability of our exchange rate. So by and large, I feel our, our problem is more of implementation. We have the EGRP document, you, we have the uh, even the sustainability document, but how much of that are we trying to implement? And um, if we don't implement, no matter how we talk about this policy, how it sounds very interesting, then we will not be expected to see the result. So I think focus should be have that long term plan. If it's a five or six year plan, I will begin to we can measure even the impact, and we can be able to see the traction that we are getting from, from that. All right, another thing that comes to mind now is the impact of you know, reduced FX inflows and uh, the external uh, reserves actually declining. And this actually affects you know, our exchange rate. We've seen several adjustments since the start of COVID-19 in less than two years. Uh, are there any major concerns here? Yeah. I I won't say that there's any major concern now uh, because uh, we, when you look at the, the current situation, the external reserve is at about $35 billion. We're expecting to draw down from the um, SDR, IMF SDR, I think that should come in by next week, about $3.3 billion. Well, also, the government is also trying to raise the uh, euro bond about six point, target is about $6.2 billion. So by the time you look at this, um, this development, they provide support 
And if when if, if you if you had them out uh, add them up, you may take the reserves to close to about four forty million dollars. So that uh, provides enough comfort. Uh, however, um, when you also look at it, I would say we also look at it from this perspective. Last year we had a lot of the foreign investors trying to leave the market. So in terms of the demand was very significant. Yes, while we, we still have some of them still uh, awaiting supply of FX, they are not as much as what we saw last year. So we don't expect any significant shifts where our projection is that as we progress, there will be a bit of convergence um, between those the, the two major markets that we still have to look at the, the NAFEX um, rate and the parallel market rate as we progress. Because when you look at the uh, 12 months forward, it, uh, the investors and exporters window is currently around 430, uh, uh, 530 uh, Naira to, to a dollar based on um, uh, the, the market. So what we would expect at that end is to see a bit of convergence so that it can reduce the arbitrage opportunities and that would also reduce the pressure even on, on, on the CBA. All right, uh, Mr. Ibo, just before we let you go briefly now, how do you see investors reacting if this uh, downward trend continues in oil prices? Okay, thanks. I believe that most times when they are um, when, when we have this kind of impact or when there are volatilities, they also present opportunities. Looking at the equities markets, the dynamics have changed compared to last year. The foreign investors were the major uh, player in the market last year. But when you check the NSC data for this year, the domestic investors have accounted for an average of over 70% of uh, the transactions in the market. So. If, uh, foreign investors trying to pull out who won't see as, as much uh, impact in the market. But we look at within the oil and gas space, the banking sector uh, lending is about uh, to oil and gas about 30%. So most times you see increased uh, impairment charges due to volatility in oil in, in oil prices. But beyond that, if we don't experience any major lockdown, we feel that. Most of this company will be able to sustain that positive momentum that we've seen uh, in over the last um, six, uh, six, uh, six months. And we, we believe that that would, that would help. And looking at the fixed income market, um, if, if the government is able to um, achieve the $6.2 billion uh, euro bond target, that would also reduce the demand even in the market. I won't see any major spike in terms of, um, of, of rates uh, for the rest of, of this year. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Ayodejebo, for joining us this morning. Ms. Ayodejebo is a head retail investor. Always my pleasure. Chapel Hill. Then I'm enjoying the rest of your day and your weekend.